Four from worksheet seven. I just swear that it was both of them were highlighted when I clicked copy. Okay. So <clears throat> we start off. Add us bearing with a speed, we run into some wind and some currents, and that, that's going to throw us off and slow us down or speed us up, right? So um, basically, I'm going to think about that as like three parts. So I have my initial, actually, let's call it. the initial ship. So here we're told our bearing is 61. So that means that if that's 61, that part is 29. And our speed is 16 knots. So when I break that into components, the horizontal component is 16 times cosine 29. The vertical component is 16 sine 29. And then we have some wind. So the wind has a bearing of 43. So that means this part is 47. And the wind is at six knots. So again, my horizontal component is six cosine 47. And the or, or vertical is six sine 47. And then we have this current. And that bearing is 217. So that's going to be like down here somewhere. It is 90. 90 is 180. And then like 37 more. So this is my standard position. So 90, 90. And then that would be 53. So 90 plus 90 plus 53 is 233. And that speed, we're told, is 3. So the horizontal component is 3 times cosine 233. And 3 times sine 233. All so far so good, Ava? Yeah. So my final is going to be, these are going to be summative, right? Because all of these things contribute to how fast and where the ship is actually going, right? what it's doing by itself, and then the combinations of wind and current are going to be like combining with that, right? So I'll go to my calculator to handle that part. Um, I want to make sure I'm in degree mode since all of my angle measures are measured in degree. So 16 cosine 29 
plus 6 cosine 47, and then 3 cosine 233. So my x-coordinate is like 16, 2, 8. And then the y-coordinate is going to be the same thing, but with signs. So there I have uh, 975. Okay, with that, Ava? Yeah. Okay. From this now, I can calculate my final speed just using the Pythagorean theorem. Or the distance formula, same thing in this case. So that's about 1897 knots. Okay there? Yeah. Okay. The last thing I need to do is calculate my bearing. So if I plot this point, 1628, 975, that's going to be somewhere in the first quadrant, right? Agreed? Yeah. So this is the bearing that I'm looking for. This is my alpha. And if I counter on my bearing, zero starts there, so this is 90. So my final bearing is going to be 90 minus alpha. where alpha is always going to be the tan inverse of the absolute value of the y final over x final. So 5909. Is that okay? So we're, oh. Good point. I put that kind of in, in a dumb place. So when I type that into my calculator, I actually solve for the bearing. Oh. Thank you. Right, because I did 90 minus. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> You're welcome. Mackenzie? For 28 from the problem set. If you give me the what, can I give you the what? I'm sorry, can you speak up a little bit? I'm, my ears are kind of stuffy because I've been sick and I'm having a hard time. Can you find the bearing? I, I have to find out the bearing. Can you find the bearing? Sure. Yeah, I don't know. So we're doing 28, you said? Okay. What was that final point you found? Okay. Okay. 
555.13. Okay. So if I want the bearing for this, I'm going to plot this point. So I'm going to go left 155 and then down 555. So we're going to be down here. So that's my bearing. So 0, 90, 180, 270. So our alpha is between the terminal side and the x-axis. So my theta in this case should be 270 minus alpha, where alpha is tan inverse of the absolute value, 55513 divided by the x, so negative 15597. And I'm not going to do the absolute value in my calculator. I'm just going to handle that in my head. Okay with that, Mackenzie? Okay. So about 195.69. You're most welcome. So again, like I'm finding that bearing basically using the same method I did for like worksheet two, you know, where I'm making my alpha and kind of counting around it just where I'm, how I'm labeling my axes is different because I'm using a bearing, right? So I start counting at the north and I'm going clockwise instead of counterclockwise, but you know, but it's still the same technique, right? Joe? Um, could you do C on page three? Like, Are you talking about the review? Yeah. That's okay. So this one here, yeah. okay. So we'll start on the inside. I noticed, I think the directions ask for an exact answer with if possible. I noticed that pi over three is a unit circle angle, so definitely negative pi over three should be unit circle as well. Um, but before I can look that up on the unit circle, I really need to Make sure it's a positive value because my unit circle doesn't have negative angles on it. Okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go find 5 pi, or I meant, sorry, uh, you cheapers, creepers, 11 pi over 6. Why am I, what is, okay. 5 pi over 3, cheapers, creepers. Reapers. You shouldn't have been okay with any of that stuff that I just was saying. It's all a bunch of nonsense. Okay. 5 pi over 3. Good. We all agree. Not making a mistake here. All right. Go to the unit circle. I find 5 pi over 3. The sign is the y coordinate. So I have negative square root 3 over 2. So this is going to be cosine inverse, then, of negative square root 3 over 2. I know that the fundamental range for cosine inverse is 0 to pi. So if I'm not given an interval over which to work with, I need to make sure I remember those fundamental ranges for the inverses. So I'm going to go back to my unit circle, look in quadrants 1 and 2. That is between 0 and pi. For the place where the x-coordinate is 
positive or is negative root 3 over 2. So going from 0 to pi is like this section, right? Looking for the place where x is negative root 3 over 2, 5 pi over 6. And uh, that's my answer. Cool. Okay. Anybody else? Alex? Page two. Is there just the one E? Okay. So I'm going to start by figuring out what quadrants that my answer needs to lie in, since I know my answer needs to be between negative 2 pi and negative 3 pi. So 0. Oh, since it's negative, I'm going clockwise, right? So going between negative 2 pi and negative 3 pi, we went through quadrants 3 and 4. You happy with that? When I consult all silly turtles crawl, between quadrants three and four, I see that cosine is negative in quadrant three. So when I draw my answer, oops, yeah, that was right. That's my theta. This is my alpha. So far, so good. So I can say theta is going to equal negative 3 pi. And then because theta is negative and the last axis we pass is vertical, then I'm going to be adding alpha. where alpha is going to be the cosine inverse of the absolute value, negative 0.87. I'm sorry, cosine inverse of the absolute value, negative 0.87. And then it's just calculator time. And I'm not going to do the absolute value in my calculator. I'm just going to do that part in my head. Oops. Got to be in radian mode. So negative 9 or point, sorry, negative 8.91. And if we wanted, we could check this. <clears throat> Cosine of that answer definitely gives me negative 0.87. And then that number, negative 8.91, is bigger than negative 3 pi, but it's smaller than negative 2 pi. So a word. <clears throat> Cool? Sure, no problem. Okay. Uh, let's finish up the section 5.1. Cool? Okay. <clears throat> Actually, let's do this.